If I tell you that this bread, I did it without kneading and without any effort at all, just using this little amount of sourdough, would you believe it? <laughs> Hi, I am Gluten Morgan, and I'm here to help you bake every day better at home. Now, I am in my Gluten Morgan lab, Buenos Aires. Today's bread is very, very easy. We just need one ingredient, time. And time is money. <laughs> and the other ingredient that we need is our sourdough starter. But, by the way, I've been baking a lot today and I almost ran out of sourdough starter. But that's not a problem because today we'll be using only one spoon, one little spoon of sourdough starter. The secret of this bread, as I told you before, is giving it some time, a lot of time. I'll be starting it today and we'll finish it tomorrow. And we'll leave it at room temperature and we won't knead, we'll just mix a few folds and that will, will be everything. And here with you, the recipe. As you see, it's very, very simple and we only use this little amount of sourdough starter. Okay, enough talking and let's start with the recipe. What we need is strong flour or bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour or the flour that you find in the supermarket. It's okay, but if you find some strong bread flour, it would be easier. The other flour that we'll be using is this one, whole wheat flour. If you don't have whole wheat flour at home, it's okay, use just regular white flour. But the good thing about this kind of flours is that the whole wheat will absorb more water than the white one. And if the white one that you're using is not that good, it's not that strong, then it will help you, but it's okay. Another ingredient, salt. We could have used it in any moment. I'll be using it right now, but that's not a problem. And the last two ingredients that we need is, of course, water that I'll be adding in a few minutes and our sourdough starter. As I told you at the beginning of this video, we'll be using just a little bit, just a tiny little spoon of sourdough starter. The key here, the secret, is to make a long, long and slow fermentation at room temperature. Remember always that room temperature is 25 degrees centigrade and we let this dough rise from now till tomorrow. So I need to get this sourdough starter from the bottom of this jar. Just one little spoon. And this is all that we need. There you go. That's all. <laughs> very, very easy. Water time. And now comes the most complicated part of this recipe. <laughs> no, don't worry. We only need to mix all the ingredients. I just want all the flowers to get wet. And that is all. Now, very slowly, I'll start mixing. And that's all. No mess, no worries, nothing. Really, really easy. Okay, it's almost done. Very, very slowly, but the flour managed to absorb the whole water. And I think we're done. Okay, finish. How long it took? 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay, let's cover it. And that's all by the moment. We'll leave this dough here on the counter for one hour. And I'll come back and let's see what's going on. Okay, it's been an hour and let's check out how is our dough. At first sight, it looks like nothing has happened. But what really happened here is the autolysis. What is the autolysis? If you might have seen some of my other videos here on the channel, you would have known. But if you don't know what is autolysis, to put it simple and straight, it's just auto kneading, auto kneading. When the dough forms, the word starts moving all around the, the dough and that's an auto kneading. You only need time. Then the dough will knead it by itself. Time to put the hands in the dough. First of all, just a little water to wash my hands. This is an easy way for not sticking the dough in, in our hands. Let me check this and look. It's just a little bit kneaded by itself. Here is some gluten development. Wow. Excellent. 
That's what we need. So what am I going to do now? Just a few foldings on the dough. That's all that we're going to do now. I'll cover it up. I will return here in one more hour. Okay, one more hour is gone. It's been two hours since we started the no kneading method. So let's check how's our dough. So the dough looks just like an hour ago, but there is a slowly, very slowly fermentation. We can't see anything by the moment, but that's the idea of this whole experiment to ferment very slowly. So what about now? I'll be making some more stretching and folding, and that will be all by today. So I'll pick the dough here from the bottom, and let's start stretching. Oh, -ho. Mm. and the last one. That's enough stretching and folding, and now I'll give it a round shape. And that's all for today. We've mixed all the ingredients, one stretch and folding, then another stretch and folding, and that's all. Now it's time for the dough to work by itself. So I'll cover it up and leave it here at room temperature until tomorrow. More or less, it's going to be like 16 hours. That's all. See you tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It's a new day and I want you to see the dough, which has been fermenting at room temperature for more than 16 hours. Look at all these bubbles in here. It's the gluten magic. With this little amount of sourdough starter. And that was all. Okay, time to shape this bread. So I have some semolina flour here and I'll put it on the counter so the dough doesn't stick on it. Okay, so let's put it on the table very slowly. Come and check this with me. Look at this dough. It's full of air, super bubbly, and we haven't done anything. Only just a, a few foldings, a little bit of sourdough, and this dough is incredible. Okay, but before we shape it, I have to prepare my banneton. I use this kind of banneton, these baskets, in order to the bread not to lose its shape, okay? Because it will be here just sitting like one or two hours. Okay, time to shape it. What I'm trying to do now is to give the bread some tension so it doesn't lose its shape, okay? The dough feels so incredible. I'll do some stitches here. And now that it's already shaped, I'll put some more semolina flour on top of it. Let it rain. Time to go into the basket. Always when you use this kind of baskets, you have to flip over the bread, okay? So, I'll cover the banneton and leave it here at room temperature for another one or two hours. In the meanwhile, I'll clean all this mess. And you can see how's the bread. It's been two hours sitting on the basket and it's almost ready to be baked. Full of air, super fluffy, super Huge. So I've, uh, I have the Dutch oven inside the oven, which is preheated at 250 degrees. The cacatua will tell you how much Fahrenheit degrees are, okay? So let's take it out of the oven and let's bake this bread. Oh, wow, it's really, really hot and it's very, very heavy. Okay, let's go. Some semolina flour on top of the bread so it doesn't stick. Here's some too. Y andiamo. Looks beautiful. Scoring time. When we are waking with bread at room temperature, it's scoring is not that good. That's why I prefer always cold fermentation. Let's go into the oven. 20 minutes. Back to the oven. Okay, now it's time to take the bread out of the oven. You should look at it, it's beautiful. And here it comes. Come and look at it. Wow. 
It's super, super heavy. Wow, wow, and crunchy. Wow. Let's open it up. So, what do you think about it? Isn't it incredible? We just did so little and this beautiful bread came out of the oven. I just can't believe it. It's so, so easy. Just a little flour, water, a lot of time, and this small amount of sourdough. No kneading, no mess, nothing. Doesn't it look like a bunny? <laughs> I open it still hot. That's not the best moment to cut a bread, but the crumb is so, so incredible, so airy. Oof, it smells so good. Let's give it a try. I like the crust, it's so thin and it's so crispy at the same time. That's very good. And the crumb still so wet because it's a little bit hot still. Let's give it a try. Mm. You must be thinking if it's too acid, but it's not. Although it's been the, 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 the dough fermented for more than 16 or 18 hours, it's not acid at all. It's so tasty, so good. The crumb is sweet, sweet and creamy. And the crust is crunchy and thin. I like that. It tastes excellent. An excellent bread without kneading, without effort. <laughs> I like it. As you've seen, it's a really, really easy bread to do. If you don't know much about sourdough bread, this is a very good bread to start with. And it's so tasty, so easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed it as I did. And please let me know in your comments, how did you find it? If you, are, if you have already done it, please let me know how it turned out. And nothing, remember to like this video, to share it, and I'll see you on the next one.